Welcome back to Tech Talks from Commercial Baking. In this episode, sponsored by JLS Automation, I'm speaking with Craig Souser, President and CEO of JLS, and we are discussing the latest developments in sandwich assembly technology. Hi, Craig. Thanks so much for joining me today. Well, thank you, Joni. It's always a pleasurable experience interfacing with you guys. Glad to be a part of this. Well, I am so excited to talk about this topic today because it's a new one for me. We're going to talk about sandwich assembly, and I guess let's lay sort of a foundation and just talk about the sandwich market first and how it's impacting commercial bakery operators. Like, What are some of the most common types of sandwich products that are being vertically integrated into bakery operations? Yeah, and and sandwich assembly is a really broad topic. We've spent most of our time to date in the frozen breakfast sandwich assembly business, not exclusively. Certainly, we've done some in, in other hamburger, frozen hamburger world and some fresh sandwich assembly. So it is broad. It's also interesting for us in that we don't, actually consider it a bakery space, even though it clearly uses baked items, it's not always bread, you know, it could be a croissant, what have you. And we don't consider it a meat protein space either because it doesn't necessarily have protein. So categorically, we've actually made it its own business unit for us. It's a very large part of what we do. We have at the moment, two very large sandwich assembly lines on our floor that we're putting together. But back to commercial baking, Not all commercial bakers are even aspiring to be in the sandwich assembly business, but many of them supply the bread, you know, for those operations. So it's an important segment for the bakery industry. Again, not necessarily directly, but indirectly in terms of providing products. It's like most other application areas that it's segmented, again, frozen and fresh clearly, but even in the breakfast space, Is it English muffin? Is it croissant? Usually with breakfast sandwiches, there's not too many ingredients, but there's exceptions to every rule. So again, most of what we have done isn't frozen, but we've we've definitely had some experience with fresh as well. Absolutely. So when we think about the production, you know, you mentioned they don't necessarily have to contain protein, but a lot of these pre-made sandwiches do contain protein. That makes me think hygienic design. So what are some of the primary considerations that have to be top of mind for sandwich assembly in terms of producing a protein related item on one line? And how can some of your equipment help with that? And again, not all the sandwich assembly companies, and I don't know the percentage, but there's a significant percentage of them that don't produce the bread or don't produce the meat. Very few produce both. So some of these customers of ours are not traditional protein facilities. So they're learning about or have learned about some of the rules of engagement in that space as we're helping them examine automation. Our customers value our experience in the protein space. Our equipment is hygienically designed. We're working in a highly caustic world day to day is just a big part of our business and a big part of our equipment design. So when people ask for robotic hygienic equipment, generally they find us as part of a relatively small list of people to talk to. So I know you have equipment like the Talon, the robotic systems can really help. And and I like what you said about frozen items aren't necessarily ready to eat, but they need to be thought of as ready to eat because we can't control what consumers do and they have to be ready for anything, right? Yeah, exactly right. The Talon was designed and developed for the protein market. So we really didn't have to change anything in terms of its general construction to make it fit sandwich assembly. You mentioned, and I think this is really insightful and important to remember, you don't consider it a bakery item. You don't consider Mm -hmm. it a protein item. It's a little bit of neither. It's a little bit of both. That's a lot of moving parts, Mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. So how does JLS guide this operation? If Especially if we're talking about, you know, a protein operation that's bringing in bakery items or a bakery operation that's bringing in protein items. How do you all sort of guide the operation through the process from the system design all the way through the startup? 
the first thing we've got to examine with them is, is this particular product, the way it's put together, even suitable for automation at all? Or maybe it's partly suited for automation. For example, it's difficult to automate the loading of pre-cooked piece of bacon, not impossible, but difficult and challenging to put that into a sandwich. To dedicate a part of the line just for that doesn't make sense. We have to help them discover that sometimes. and What makes sense to automate, what can be automated, and what probably is better left to be done manually. And if we're going to have something that's going to be done manually, well, then we have to allow space for that at the appropriate place in the line. We have somewhat standard templates that we use for certain types of sandwiches, but we also know there may be a different approach. For example, someone might use a pump to extrude cheese. Other companies may want to use a slicer to slice the cheese. So there's advantages to each. And you know we help them understand that. We are pretty much always doing usually two levels of simulation. One, I'll say purely robotic, purely oriented towards how many robots do we need? What's the robot rate going to look like? What's going to happen if a robot goes offline? And you know we have a, a tool that we've developed to do that. And we also have a much more visual simulation tool that we use. And that's even getting modernized going forward. It's part of an overall initiative we call JLS 3D, where it's a lifelike rendering and driving us in the direction of digital twins which ultimately is what we want to offer the sandwich assembly space that, look, we can build your line virtually and run it and show you where the bottlenecks are, what's going to happen if a part of the line fails, because these lines are complicated. But in addition to that, even with some of our good longstanding customers, we'll embed technicians with our equipment for months after commissioning to help them troubleshoot, but then ultimately to help them take ownership, get them really well trained. There's nothing like a crisis to drive training. You know, when somebody's like, oh man, this thing stopped running, what do I do? To say, okay, you're going to go do it, but I'm going to be here to help you. So again, that's why we really need to work with them up front and after install to make sure it's successful. I know we're, we're talking about the robotics sandwich assembly equipment, the talent, but I want to also just think about what happens after the assembly because JLS does a lot more. So can you kind of describe what your capabilities are? You don't just install the robotic equipment and get all of those moving parts together and then they're just on their own. What are the packaging needs for these types of complex products? And then what are your capabilities that can help with that as well? We build the sandwich and it's either going to get flow wrapped or go into a thermoformer. And we have robotic equipment to load a wrapper and load a thermoformer. Now it's flow wrapped. Well, if it's food service, it's going to go directly into a case. We have a robotic case packer we call the Osprey. It may go into a carton and we often provide a cartoning solution we call our Peregrine. And we have a couple customers that we're doing sandwich assembly lines for that said, look, we want you to take responsibility for this system, this line, the whole way through palletizing. JLS as a company does not build palletizing equipment, but we will procure it and implement it and support it as part of our offering. We have a couple partners that we use somewhat exclusively for that. So literally from the I'll say naked components to it being stretch wrapped on a pallet, we will provide a complete line. Okay. One last question. It's an easy one. How can a baking company get in touch with you to learn more, to see what the latest innovations are? The easiest thing for them is just type into your search system, jlsautomation.com and we'll pop right up and all of our contact information is there. We've got sales resources all over North America, and they're very knowledgeable about sandwich assembly. They will bring in our appropriate subject matter experts to help evaluate, simulate, and put together a solution. Awesome. Well, Craig, this was a really cool conversation. 
thank you so much for your time and for sharing your insight into this incredible technology. And I can't wait to see what's next. Great. Well, come visit us in Chicago and we'll show you. I will be there. Very good. Thanks so much, Joni.